This is a Casio FX702P. It's quite an old, basic, programmable calculator. And um, if I turn it on, you can see it comes up with ready P0. You can also see maybe that the top line of the LCD is missing, top row there. There's also some, um, well, some damage there, which is probably where air has leaked into the display. That's fairly unusual on these, I've not seen too many like that, but um, the display not working like this is quite common. The reason for it, I've got another one here, here's an LCD from an FX702P and you can see that the LCD is connected with one of these heat seal connectors that actually glues on there with conductive glue and then it glues onto the PCB. Over time this just basically falls off um, the carbon traces sometimes break as they had on this one and also the, the glue degrades and um, as I was trying to fix traces on here it actually fell off the LCD so uh, that was the end of that um, but I thought well you could have a go at remaking the LCD but essentially there's nothing wrong with this LCD so there wouldn't be a lot of point the problem is the connector and these are really difficult to put back on. You can't really solder to the glass, so you've got to use some sort of conductive adhesive there. Then you need some sort of conductive ribbon cable to connect this to the PCB. You could solder to the PCB, but that only gives you one end of the connector. So I thought, um, well, it's fairly low tech technology and the circuit diagrams available on the internet for this I thought what if I take a fast processor and attach it to the bus and sniff the bus and then display the display data that was destined for the display controllers on an LCD so this is this FX702P that the uh, display the LCD display over here came from. This actually came out of here. And what I've done, if I zoom out a bit, what I've done is I've put, you can't quite see it there, I've actually put, uh, slide that there, I've put a blue pill, which is an ARM processor, on the bus using wires. Uh, the internal bus of the 702P and I've attached an LCD to that and this LCD is designed to display whatever data is being sent to the display controllers and there's two of them via the ARM processor on this um, LCD so the bus on the 702 runs at quite a slow speed it's about 100 kilohertz which means it's now possible to take ARM processors like on this blue pill uh, that run at about 72 megahertz and there's such a disparity that you can actually write code which looks at the bus in real time does some decoding and can display it on an LCD so this blue pill is just running an Arduino sketch it's just written in um, in the sort of C, C++ of the Arduino land it does use interrupts so the, the bus sniffing is done using interrupts on the chip enable for the display chip so when the chip enable goes low you get an interrupt and then that bus cycle is captured and processed by the uh, ARM processor. Display is just a standard 4x20 LCD display. The display on the 702P has got some dot matrix characters there's four seven segment displays and a few enunciators and uh, you can just about display that I get one line spare on the display down here which I use for debug data at the moment and um, being 20 characters wide the top line becomes the dot matrix these four digits here down in the bottom left are the um, seven segment display which displays the number of steps that are free and then there's various enunciators at the moment only the right enunciator is on but if I turn the uh, 702 on you can see that it's come up down here with ready P0 just like the original one did. The run enunciator's on, degrees, and the 1680 steps, which is what you get in a blank, empty 702p. So if I do mode 5, it flips the radians, 
and if I do mode 6, flips to gradients and back to degrees, and it looks like there's a bug there that needs sorting. This line here with the 8s and the Bs, that's um, part of the debug for the enunciators. That can be removed and you end up with just the display of what's on the uh, 702p. I'll flip it into mode 1, which is the program mode. There you go. So it's now saying ready P0. We can write a little program which will just display an incrementing number. And you can see it's usable. You can, um, you can actually type a program in. There are some limitations with the decoding that I've got. Oh, no, done that wrong. Let me just type this in. Right, so you can see the steps are decreasing here. We're now down to 1655. I go back to mode zero and run that. That's now just counting, so it's incrementing I displaying it. Quite a quick, simple program, but you can see it's usable and it, it runs. Um, there are a few problems. The first problem is that the F1, F2 keys, I haven't managed to decode the protocol for that. It's a bit weird. Um, arc and hyperbolic. Uh, enunciators also a bit difficult so in this version of the code they're not actually displayed I I may put some more work into that but you can sort of get away without them because when you do an arc sign you can you can actually see that ASN appears as opposed to sign so you know that you've got the right thing you can always delete it if you want to um, the other problem which I'm not sure I'm gonna ever be able to sort out is that the cursor, there should be a cursor here flashing at the moment and it's on the left hand part of the display at the moment and that means it's on one of the display controllers and the left hand one I just can't work out what the cursor protocol is. The right hand cursor though you can see now there's a cursor flashing there. That was, well I wouldn't say fairly simple but that was decodable so the left hand part of the display does actually have a cursor and you can move it over and over type and things like that but I just couldn't work out what the left hand protocol was. The display controllers seem to have completely different protocols. You would have thought they'd put two down and then talk to them in the same way. One would do one half, one would do the other half but that is not the way that it's it's been set up and I've got no idea why really. Maybe one is a slave to the other. You can actually get all of the matrix display here from just one controller. So I think maybe that's a master and the other one is only used occasionally for things. Unfortunately, the left hand part of the display seems to control the F1, F2 arc and hyperbolic enunciators and also the cursor for the uh, left hand display, which is a bit bit of a shame, but I mean, it, it all works. You can, you can list the program and um, that will display. There you go, it's scrolling through and um, you can use it, you can type programs, you can edit them as long as you're not doing too much with the cursor on the left hand side of the display. Um, and everything works if I do some calculations. There you go, there's the answer. So you can use it as a calculator, a programmable calculator as well. You've also um, you've got the option now, because you've got the blue pill attached to it, that you can dump a lot of stuff out the serial port of the blue pill. So at the moment, as this is running in this mode, it's actually dumping what's coming up on the display out through the serial port, so you could capture that if you wanted to. Um, let's clear that. The sketch can also run in a couple of modes. You can see here I've got connectors on this PCB that I made to connect all the signals through to the blue pill from the um, inside of the 702P. These are for logic analyzer connections because I needed to decode the bus and work out what was going on in the early days. Um, I decided because my logic analyzer has got a fairly slow serial output it was starting to be quite time consuming actually using that as uh, a logic analyzer so I wrote the sketch so that you can run it in two modes or compile it in two modes and one mode the decoding of the data is actually done in the interrupt handler and it's put in buffers that the main loop then displays in the other mode the interrupt handler actually captures traces that are very similar to the ones that I got on my logic analyzer and then the main loop decodes the logic analyzer traces uh, and it also the sketch dumps them out to the serial port so that you can get traces out of here a lot faster than I can get them out of my uh, logic analyzer. Uh, 
Also, you don't need a logic analyzer with it, you can do it all just with this setup here. The downside of that is that the display here is quite responsive and immediately you get the result of the calculation. If you run it in logic analyzer mode, the traces have to be captured, then they go to the main loop and get decoded and you get a delay of a well two or three seconds on something like that before you get the display here and occasionally you miss cycles as well because while you're handling the processing here another interrupt can come in before you've emptied the buffer and it overflows the buffer but it's not too much of a problem and for my purposes of just decoding the bus I can I can just put up with that and just do things like F1 toggle, F2 toggle and see what the signals are doing in real time more or less so you can look at the serial output and just see what the, the bus is doing. But yeah, there you go, as a proof of concept, it works. And um, I can now use this 702P and do stuff on it. And I'm quite pleased with it. All the enunciators are there, so you've got print for print, and you've got trace for trace, and if you type another program in, that error was because there was no, um, no printer attached. It gets a bit upset if there's no printer attached, but if we put it in P1, we put a short program in there. If we just do an input F, oh, let's give it a line number. Let's start again and give it a proper line number. Input F. There you go, so now if we go to run mode, so P1 will just input a number and you get the question marks, it's now asking for the value of f. If you press exit, you get a stop there, which tells you the program's stopped. And that's just one of the enunciators that appears. So uh, all of them except for those four there are actually here and working. So you go into mode one and it turns into the right mode and so on. The um, step display is displayed all the time, which it isn't for some reason on the 702P. When you go into mode zero, normally that would blank out, but it was harder blanking it out than just leaving it up there all the time. So I, I don't know why they did that really, because the display is always there. You can just leave it there telling you how many steps you've got, but for some reason they blank it out. But there you go. So with the modern processor, you can just hang off a bus and in real time decode what's going on and do something with it. And uh, it seems this processor seems to have enough power to do this fairly comfortably. It's, it doesn't seem to be a problem for it at all. The only problem I had was in logic analyzer mode, the uh, buffers weren't big enough, and that's just because I haven't got enough RAM. That was the problem with that. The um, LCD that I'm using doesn't actually manage some of the characters. There's some like um, this. Let's get it there. There's some like, um, what's going on here? Where's the pi? I've got, there it is. So the pi symbol turns out to be in the character set of the LCD, but um, if you do something like DMS 2.5, you end up with the degrees, <laughs> minutes, and seconds display. And I've had to use some strange characters for that. You can just about get away with it. They're not exactly the same as the ones that the calculator originally used. But there's some things here, like not equal. That is actually a user-defined character on the LCD because that character doesn't exist in the character set. And neither does greater than and equal and less than and equal. So they're also done using the character set. The user-defined characters of the LCD controller, you get, you get eight characters you can use. So I need to look at those and put some more accurate ones in, I think. And I might have a go at getting the enunciators and the cursor working, but I spent ages looking at that and really couldn't work out what was going on. I've got something that almost works with the uh, four enunciators, but it's not quite right and goes wrong occasionally. But it's, it's usable now, and I can actually uh, do stuff with it, so I'm quite pleased with that. There you go. So this is a PCB I've made up. It's a double-sided PCB, but I milled it single-sided and used wires to do one and traces on the other side, um, just as a sort of prototype. There's still some tricky soldering needed underneath, inside, and uh, I've not really got a neat way of getting that out. It's just a prototype, really. This is the second prototype. The first one, I had direct wires 
to a uh, IDC connector there. That went off to the board, and this I had logic analyzer traces uh, probes going in here, and the uh, wiring to the blue pill was actually a real mess of wires. So this is the first blue pill that I attached, and uh, I think it's a lot neater with the PCB. And if it was soldered in a bit neater and the PCB was squashed down and maybe the form factor was changed, you could probably make something fairly compact. Um, I'm not sure you could fit it in the case. You, you might be able to because the blue pill's fairly small, there's a bit of space. But getting an LCD that fits in there and displays everything, that might be a bit harder. So I decided just to, here, it's just an exploded debug version, a sort of breakout board really.